first thing, the draft of minutes. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, uh, I, mean, I can't see the time, but it is. Um, it's 7.36. 7.36. Tree Committee. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. It has been, I, I don't even, it feels like it's been a year since I've seen you. <laughs> but I hope everyone is doing well, either escaping Omicron or at least not having much trouble with it. Um, and first on our agenda, did you all have a chance to look at the minutes? We did some review on it. And are there any additional changes? Um. I had a comment. I'm just looking for it. I, I'm looking for where it, uh, there's the note about the trees across from the high school. There it is. Tree law. I, um, item 7B. Tree bank. Tree bank. Yeah. Um, tree, right. Tree bank under tree law. If that could be changed, uh, the, the third sentence, scale voice concerns regarding uh, can the canopy media. Sorry? Uh, however, Gail voiced it, so you corrected. Yeah, concerns re uh, re regarding canopy, just canopy needed. It, it just sounded a little confusing to me. Or tree canopy. I think it was supposed to be tree canopy, regarding tree canopy needed across from MHS. If you could change the to tree. I don't want anyone to think that like a storefront needs a canopy or something <laughs> over their entrance. Okay, um, any other changes, corrections? Okay, would someone like to move to approve the minutes? Uh, as amended, I think it has to be minutes as amended. As no? amended, as amended. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to approve. I think Marlene, Marlene, Marlene oh. moves. Seconding it. Um, okay, second. Yep. I, I don't know who moved and who seconded. Oh, uh, Gail, Gail motioned and I seconded. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, go back up here to the agenda. Comments okay. from residents. Comments from the residents. I think we have at least one person visiting. Um, is she there and would she like to make any comments about anything regarding trees? Hi, hi, it's Mary Schaub. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mary. We yes, hear you. We hear you. Um, Welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's it's great that the minutes are available on the website and that um, that people can actually come and listen to all the good work that that's being done. I just um, I'm here because I'm curious about one of the agenda items. Um, I live at 1517 Henry Avenue, um, next to 1523. We Henry. heard a lot. We corresponded a lot uh, recently. Yes. Um, so I just I have an interest in in the tree law, the the FAQs, how it will be treated going forward, and obviously I'm a you know a big fan of the village being more involved in you know in the canopy, in native trees mm -hmm. and, and the work that the committee does. So that's why I'm here. Okay, Excellent. well, thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for being so actively interested. Um, actually, one of the agenda items, well, we'll get to um, under, where was it? Oh, I was under enforcement. So we'll get to it when we come down. I, although I don't have an answer on it. Do you, I, maybe you do, because um, village manager is out of the office this week. And I tried to find out from someone else whether or what enforcement had happened at 1523. And I don't know. The person I talked to didn't know either. So I, I hope that they've done something. I know they issued a violation for the sidewalk obstructions, but I don't know what else has been done. Um, okay, if we go back up to correspondence, um, we have had only two. Mary, did you have something else to say? 
No, no, um, okay. not, not. I heard, I heard a bleep from someone and I thought maybe we'd cut you off. <laughs> um, under the correspondence, we've had two emails. It was a great month. Um, one is from the resident at 130 Beach um, regor regarding the recent planning board meeting on the plant selections at 1010 Orienta. And um, we actually, Gail did watch that entire meeting. And so f late, farther down in the, in the agenda, she has reported on it. Um, it. It was very, I think, encouraging. Her report was, I think the planning board is, from my, uh, from my meetings with them, planning board is very much attuned to the need for native trees and for trees that are going to be large as opposed to the ones originally proposed there um, on a clear cut lot, uh, which took out a lot of mature trees and they were suggesting putting in a lot of small little ornamental trees, which planning board said would not be acceptable. Good. Yeah. Um, Jefferson Avenue, I don't know the street number for this one. We also got, I had an email, which I didn't discover until I finally got into my village email account. And this was fairly wide ranging. It was about solar panels and paving and dogs and the Army Corps plans for flood mitigation. So it is was sent out today. Um, you can look at it and see if it is of interest to you. Um, old business. I have, Gail, this is another thing that I would have asked Jerry had he been here and couldn't get other information. Gail, you had raised at the last meeting um, a tree at 749 or across from 749 Bleecker was marked to be removed and you felt that it would benefit from pruning. Did you, do you know whether they removed it or whether they've done anything about it at all? You don't. Okay. So that's one thing that we'll have to follow up on. I will follow up on that. Um, for the tree loss, several things. I went, I, as you know, last fall I met, went to a planning board meeting and they subsequently sent me some comments of changes that they would like to see in the law. Most of them having to do with um, either, there, there were a couple places where it was inconsistent within the law and so I, I, I made that adjustment. I haven't sent it to the attorneys. I know Nora is going to take a look at it and then we'll send it on to the attorneys to put in the law, but I know what we intended it to say. So I removed the section that didn't say that was kind of, um, inconsistent. And um, the other consistencies had to do with other village code that I hadn't actually been aware of. So I, I made a note of those comments, but I think that's something that the attorneys probably would do a better job on than I would. They're not substantial changes. I think they're just a question of being brought into consistency with the new tree law. Um, so I, if you looked at the draft that I sent, I don't know, uh, should we? Is it an is it an attachment, Bev? I'm sorry. It's an attachment. It's his third attachment. Okay. Uh, oh, this was the correspondence. It's after yeah. that? No. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, three. Okay. All right. Um, this one. I don't remember what this one does. Um, it's regarding tree preservation plans. As part of the planning board's jurisdiction. Right. Yeah. No permit is required for the removal of a tree or trees. Oh, I know what it is. And this is the one that was inconsistent with another part. Uh, there was another section where we said that the building department would issue the permits. And um, which would mean that they would go from the planning board to the building department. And that really wasn't our intention. Our intention was for the planning board to approve a tree preservation plan as part of the site plan. 
um, then I see that below that three, I'm sorry, I, I wrote this a couple of days ago. So, so below that is the section that had to do with the building department doing it and that section is being deleted. So it's no longer contradictory. Um, the next 318C, um, Want me to keep going down? Or, or well, no, I, I'm, I'm not pulling it out. Can you go back up, please? Sure. Higher? No, 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 no. We've already done that. Except under emergency conditions, the building inspector. That's in the code already. Oh, you know, I mean, we can, I, I can't do this. I'm sorry, I don't have it all in front of me. If you haven't read it, I, I will either do it next month or I'll work it out with the attorneys. How about we carry this over for, um, for next month's meeting then? Because we, we need to touch base with Jerry also. Yeah. yeah I, I think you should decide the changes that you want. I did that. Right, and then they don't have to be in final form. They really just need to be explained. Mm -hmm. The Board of Trustees can, you know. Does it go to the trustees or does it go to the attorneys first? It has to go to the, to go to the trustees. To change okay. the law, it has to go to the trustees. So that's they, what I didn't know. Okay, I can write a narrative around it. Yeah, and I think that's easier. And then and then if the trustees conceptually agree. Okay. Um, then we can ask the village attorney to make the corrections or make the work. Okay, I didn't know that was the process. That was my original question. Yeah. Okay, so should we, okay, so I'll work on that and um, get a narrative <laughs> and we can look at it next month. Bless you, whoever that was. Thank you. Okay. I just had a quick question, uh, Beverly. Uh, what normally happens when you propose a new laws? Are we all supposed to read it or is it just you or how? How is this? Uh, well, when we wrote this law, which is an entirely new law, it took, first of all, it took a process of about 10 years, not continuous work, but okay. it was picked up and set down and walked away from and then brought back. And uh, we had sort of a subcommittee working on it, both initially and then when we got back to it and there was real interest um, it, with the village to move ahead with it. We had like two people. I was one of them. I think Gail was one at, at some times. We worked with Nora. And then we also worked with the attorney to draft the law. And then when it was a draft, uh, you know, a full draft, the whole committee was given it to read and raise questions and you know, suggest changes if they want. And then we voted it to go to the board of trustees. And then we, had, then we had a pandemic. <laughs> but usually what happens is the, the board of trustees decides that we have to enact the law for whatever reason, either staff recommends it or some, a board member wants to do it. And uh -huh. then it's worked on with the attorney. This was unusual, but the tree law was so complicated that the tree committee did a lot of the research and did a lot. The tree committee was a lot more involved in this than usually, than, than um, in most, than in most laws, there's not usually um, you know, sometimes the zoning board will, will, will if it's a, a zoning change, we have the land use boards review it, but mm -hmm. the tree committee was um, much more involved than, than, than is the normal process, for which yes. everybody is very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, anyone who reads legalese and goes, you know, like just fights through it, I mean, they should be tons of credit, right? I mean... Yep. I have gained the skill of being able to find things in the code. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I looked at it and there's some stuff in there, like, for example, the village of Mamaronic Tree Bank. What's that? That sounds kind well, of Well, that's cool. actually a new thing. And that was at the request of the, that's the next one. Uh, it's an addition at the request of the planning board. And I guess this is something the village will consider. Are, uh, are we leaving the, um, the, the addendums right now? No, I'm on what you have showing on your. Oh, screen. okay. Sorry. Addition 318 oh, G3. Yes. Um, it's the tree bank. And we did not have that in the code um, because we didn't want um, developers in particular to have an out. 
you know, I'll just give trees to the tree bank and then I can fill my lot, cut all the trees down. So in, as they explained to me when I went to their meeting after the law had passed, there are times when, particularly with a commercial property, they are reviewing it and, you know, the property may be on a fairly small plot and they need that space for whatever they're doing and have parking, off-street parking. And you know, they will try to get as many trees, if trees are taken down, they'll try either to preserve trees or trees are taken down to have them replanted, but there really might not be space. Um, so they would, it would be helpful for them if they could take those excess trees that they really can't put into a commercial development site and put them into a tree bank. And probably that would be very useful for the village of Mamaroneck because you know, we could draw on that bank to plant more trees. You know, pay, We have a budget, but beyond that budget, we could plant the trees that have been paid for through the bank. So sure. I, I tried to write this so that it was really a planning board option only because I really don't want to see it as an out. We're trying one of our you know, most important goals is to try and either save or rebuild the canopy throughout the village. And if everybody gets to put their trees in a tree bank and they all end up in Florence Park, that's not going to really solve the problem that we're trying to accomplish or Harbor Island or anywhere. Sure. sure. Yeah. So that's the tree bank idea. And that would be, that's something that's not in the law that was just passed. So any other questions? No. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Beverly. Welcome. Good question. Okay, more on the tree law. Um, you know, it's been the question of how do people actually, it was passed recently in the fall, um, and how do residents know that we have a new tree law and what's in it? So it, it's been, you know, mentioned and discussed and announced a couple ways, but uh, on the 21st, January the 21st, which I guess was Sunday, um, the village newsletter, the online village newsletter um, actually announced it and included a copy, a, a link to the tree law, a link to the FAQ and a link to the actual application, which I thought was brilliant on Robert's part, application for a permit so that you know people could just take that if they if they so wish. Um, so I, you know, I don't know how many people receive the village news, but I do know that a lot of people read it. So I was pleased by that. I have a suggestion, Beverly. Um, uh -huh. I think we had talked about this before, but is there a way we can promote the law to the tree companies? I think that's a good idea. You mean to the 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 ones that do the pruning and the yes. Takedowns? Yes, I think it's a good idea because yes, actually, yeah, they, they need to be aware they, of it. They can and they can advise residents, you know, yeah. that what they're doing needs a permit. Yep. Um, and I don't remember if the law makes them uh, puts them at risk if they break the. It doesn't. We wanted to, <laughs> okay. but it was one of the things we couldn't. We for okay. whatever reason we were told we couldn't do. I see. Legal reason, okay. I guess. Yeah, but still, I think it would be good for them to know about it. Well, I know, I think so too, because they can tell residents. I know that um, I, in the last four or five years, have been getting permission from the village to prune a couple of very, very large trees that belong to the village in the right of way in front of my house, because we've lost so many trees and they're you know, some of the last remaining big canopy that we have there. Mm -hmm. And the first year I did it, um, I was walking, I was having some other trees pruned and I was walking around showing them the trees and I pointed to these trees. And he said, those are village trees, you can't do that. So I, <laughs> out, you know, he was, so he was really advising me but I brought out my permit in that case, but I was impressed that he did that. Yeah. The other suggestion I had is um, I walk around all the time and see, you know, trees that look like they're being worked on. And I don't know if they're being pruned or if they're being taken down. And sometimes 
it's only a difference of a, a half an hour, an hour, and then the tree disappears. So yeah. it, it really, you really can't tell just by looking what they're up to. Um, and I, I often proactively call the building inspector's office to alert them. And one time they, they came right when I called and they still couldn't stop the tree from being taken down. Oh, and really? there was, and there was a fine levied against okay. the homeowner for taking it down without a permit. So okay. the tree was within the law. Um, this was, uh, I think it was on um, Cortland or Monroe, one of those streets. Um, and it was still very early in the law. The, the homeowner yeah. probably didn't know about the law, yeah. but still, I mean, it was an example where I, I took quick action and they actually responded in time, but not in time, but they responded quickly, but they still didn't get there fast enough. But my, my suggestion is, it would be great if there was a hotline for residents to call if they see a tree being worked on. And, you know, especially if it's a mature tree, um, so uh, they can pull the hotline and say, hey, there's this tree being worked on, you know, is it, is this, is this on the level or not? Because it's certainly not a seamless process, somebody no. having to call the building inspector every single time this is going no. on. Not yeah. In fact, I think probably after like we're about four months into this law, and they're probably already yeah. hearing from us. Yeah. So that might be a good idea. But you're right; it's really fast. You know, they come in and and unless they're clear cutting and it takes a couple of days. Right. Then they can take a tree down pretty fast. Yeah. And that's too bad. I'm I'm hoping that as people, I don't know. Well, that comes to the next thing on here, <laughs> which I wrote down hotline though. I think that's an interesting idea too. Um, I, I think I mentioned uh, several times that RINEC, um, there's an action research students group that meets after school with um, faculty member and they do, they take on one social action project and they, um, you know, the set a goal for it. Anyway, they're going to take on uh, making village residents aware and supportive, you know, like their trees. And they're going to do that, we'll work with them. They probably don't have time to do it start to finish because we're in the middle of the year. But um, they're going to develop a survey. They're going to do some research, uh, like stopping and talking to people um, to find out what some of the points are that should go into the survey. And then they'll develop a survey that the village is going to e-blast out to its list of residents um, to get just different answers to a profile of people and how they feel about trees and how they, I don't know what's on it. We'll see it before it goes out, but um, what characterizes them, and then also some sense of what might make them feel good about preserving trees or planting trees. And the village has agreed to e-blast it for them. They're gonna to get to review it, obviously. And then they will turn the information over. So they'll analyze the data and then turn it over, probably turn it over up to us to create a plan actually to follow their advice. Um, and try to build just a greater sense of Mamaroneck, the village of Mamaroneck as a tree-friendly, tree-supporting community. There are a lot of people who feel that way, but there are quite a few who don't. And those are the ones that we really would like. So, so Beverly, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I, was, I was thinking about some of the questions or some of the things you were saying a while back about like a lot of folks are wary of putting trees in the yard for various reasons and then, <laughs> So I'm a finance person. So I started looking at um, financial values of having trees in their yard. Um, okay. And there's good evidence out there for a lot of folks that like having large trees in, your, in front of your house, there's several things. It can contribute an additional seven to like 15% more value. To oh, really? Home. Yes. Um, I was going to just bring up the link so I could share with you, but uh, it's upstairs on my other computer. In addition to that, they found that like trees provide, uh, well, the, contrary to what you believe, that trees actually reduce crime. Reduce what? I'm sorry. 
crime. I do believe it actually, because I think they, they just sue. There's an effect of trees that people report when they come back from walks in the forest. I, I was thinking people oh, they, they hide behind think, the trees to, to do crime. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. They, I think the idea is that when there are trees in the community, it's more pleasant to spend time outside. Maybe it's cooler, it's just more beautiful. And when you have more people outside, chances, you know, it, that can help reduce crime. It becomes safer. I think you're right, Gail. I think there was something like that. Um, uh, but but the interesting thing for me was always, you know, a lot of people are very practical when they think about, um, you know, I don't care about the shade and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes money speaks to people, you know. Yeah, and yeah, if, yeah. There's, if there's documented and evidence out there that, you know, a well shaded, a canopy of larger trees, it, the, yeah, the study yeah. I'll, I'll send, uh, I think was done by like UNC, like one of the, you know, nice good schools in North Carolina that shows that, you know, there's an actual financial impact of having a house with lots of trees. It, and it's, it, can, it's, it can also yeah. help uh, cool your home. It can lower cooling costs if you have deciduous trees on the south side of your home. Deciduous meaning the trees that, you know, shed their leaves. If you have those on the south side, it shades so you don't have to run the air conditioner so much. I've experienced that in my, in my uh, co-op here. And in the winter, the leaves are down. So then you get the benefit of solar heating to reduce heating costs. Then if you plant uh, evergreens on the Northeast, it acts as a windbreaker, uh, you know, for cold Northeast winds. And that can also help lower heating costs. So those are actual, you know, uh, concrete, savings it's well, planting trees i mean that's that's great information i think uh, collectively i mean along with this survey you know where you're trying to understand how people feel about trees i mean it's not always about the you know the generic feeling of you know just being in a nice place there's actual a, a practical financial implication of having large trees in front of your house and, and how, you know, if you could articulate that somehow to maybe skeptical folks or, yeah. or in, in general, it might be useful for us. Um, you know, even on my street on Frank, there's a couple of houses. I'm like, man, that house is facing south. Uh, as you were saying, it must be blazing hot in the summer and, you know, they got no coverage. Uh, and then in the winter, you know, and then I just, there's, there's uh, meaningful financial impacts that, you know, I think that's articulated in, you know, somewhere like by universities that maybe we could draw out for um, a general, a different view. I just, you know, it feels That's an interesting thought because at some point we'll have to, you know, maybe there are different, because there are different things that have effects for different people. Mark? Yeah. Mark? Yeah. Excuse me, everybody. Um, <laughs> my workspace has been invaded. Um, yeah, you're right. There are different messages that would probably really resonate with different people. And I'm not a marketing person, but I could see that we might want in some way to promote the idea that you can add seven to 15% on your property value or reduce crime you know, or some of these other benefits. And they might be separate you know, separate messages so they don't get lost with one another. Yeah, I mean, if we had like a number in our head, like what's the property value of all of Mamaroneck, you know, of our area, and, you know, oh, uh, increase that by 7 to 15 percent, that's meaningful. I mean, it's that's a lot of money. Even, uh, even on one house, 7 to 15 percent is a lot of benefit, I think. Absolutely. I mean, it's nothing, I mean, where we live, it's nothing to sort of sneeze at. Um, you know, it'll be interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll read more about it, but I mean, you know, if you guys think of ways we could sort of, and Gail, along with your thoughts on wind, as well as, as you know, maybe if you could quantify somehow about sun, like all this stuff could really like um, um, be something that we could think about when we're approaching less, uh, less hospitable or less tree loving people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would be interested in, do you have the reference to the property value study? I do, and I could probably bring it up now. Hold on. Um, would you send it around? That would be better. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Because yeah. um, I've been actually collecting some articles on different things that trees do, like large mature trees, because that was kind of 
such an art. Those are the trees um, people. Uh, Matt, when you share it, when anybody shares anything, uh, make sure to use the tree committee uh, at the Village of Amaranek um, email address. I will. I will. Thank you. Um, so I didn't mean to uh, diverge off that. No, but it, it's more tied in for me. So it's very, it's very tied in, and that's our, that's where we are now. We've got the law. It's a good law. Um, I think I know the planning board is is just really happy to have it because they can, they have to work within the law, and it gives them, you know, when they make their approvals of site plans, and this gives them really strong support for things that they think are important, but which were not previously part of the law. So um, any, so now we've got the law, but the next two things to be done, we're not finished. One is you know, to make sure the enforcement happens, which the hotline is a great idea. Both of the Marlene suggestions, telling the Arbor companies is a good idea too. Um, and then finally, you know, we shouldn't even, it would be wonderful if we never even had to get to enforcement if um, people just valued their trees for any number of reasons. And we were one happy village, <laughs> uh, one tree friendly village. Um, oh, attachment four, can we go on to that? This is now moving on to the planning board review of 1010 Orienta, the plant selections. That's your email, Gail. Gail sat in on that webinar um, and wrote very well, wrote up very well what the comments were. Essentially, the Matt, you may not know, or Mary, you may not know that um, last summer, a very, I think more than an acre of land in or on Orienta Avenue, which in had, no one had lived there for about 30 years and it was just completely covered with large mature trees and then was bought by a developer who clear cut it pretty quickly and we didn't have a tree law at that point to stop it so it's now been purchased by I believe people who want to live there and they're working with the planning board now, um, you know, their plans and also their plans for the landscaping. And the suggestions they made were, well, Gail, you talk about it. You went to the meeting. <laughs> well, I, it, the, these are the notes that I took. Um, a, a comment that was made was that, you know, the, it has a very small, by the developer uh, or by the architect, not the developer, uh, the architect for the couple that's going to be living there for the owners uh, was saying how it, it will have a very small footprint. It's just going to be a small percentage of the property. And I don't remember. I'm sorry. You mean the house? The house. Yeah, the house and all the work they're doing. And I don't remember who said it if I have notes here on this particular comment but someone said that that's actually incorrect it's going to affect a hundred percent of the property because what you do in one place affects another place because even if you're not digging in a certain spot you're going to have equipment going over that spot and it you know so that that was it was very nice to hear how that you know yeah. it's like a more holistic approach and a more realistic approach um the, the scattered, their proposal for scattered crepe myrtles in little bunches of three. It's a small decorative tree, and that's not what the it's uh, also planning the, board wanted. A, it's not a native, nor is Arborvita, I don't think. Uh, I don't know about that, but that's not, you know, they, they uh, Susan Oakley said there are far too many. Uh, non-native plants, they're looking for trees, the largest number of growing trees that the site can support and that they have to replace a lot of the canopy. Yeah. Um, then this is of concern to me. There is a distinct, Cindy Goldstein said, there is a distinct code violation 
I'm not sure if I wrote the number correctly. It was the meeting was going pretty quickly. I think it was 342-75, but I'm not 100% sure that the clear cutting was an egregious violation of the code, even without a tree law, you know, and that the village of Mamaroneck needs to follow up on culpability and consequences for the clear cutting of all vegetation. And I just don't, I haven't heard about any of that happening. It should be happening. I can I interject? You know, it was a law that was violated. What are the, what's the consequence? That's, Nora? That's Nora. the conversation that you had um, before the law was passed. Remember in June or July when you were first talking about this? That Absolutely. Wendy brought that up when Wendy was Wendy on the committee, Wendy Zoland. Um, that's something to bring up with the village manager and the building inspector. Mm -hmm. And it, it did, in fact, violate was the zoning code, I believe, it's without the tree law, before the tree law had been passed. I think it's and, um, and can that be solved? Sorry. I was going to say the second problem that you picked up in your notes that they pointed out is that they were um they were proposing to plan number one small things that at maturity will be very small and number two are non-native you know people landscapers in particular even though they know the difference love non-native plants because they nothing nothing eats them so <laughs> so they don't get complaints from their clients but right but them, and but what they, people uh, may not understand is that you need the little critters that eat the leaves they don't eat all the leaves but you need them because they feed the birds and we now have more and more species of birds that have become extinct just this past year and if you know we're doing a great job of getting rid of bugs by getting um non-native and also bringing non-native bugs here that are very yeah. destructive to our native trees so all of you know we, we need native trees yeah also the bugs do the pollinating so we won't have anything to eat yeah it's it will yeah. have a lot of jobs oh, available mary. if we have to pollinate our own food that's true mary has her hand up can you unmute her i i unmuted myself um okay. i'm sorry i don't if this is not appropriate. Um, I'm just, I'm listening to what everyone is saying. And I'm wondering if um, maybe something that comes out of the high school students could be something like an infographic, just a very quick one pager, you know, could almost be postcard size that talks about the, the benefits that Matt was mentioning, the financial benefits, the home heating, um, you know, the, the increasing the value of, of homes. And then also what Gail is talking about with um, the pollinators and, you know, the benefits the trees offer us in terms of um, supporting all that life and that could be something that's used as that communication tool to the community. Just, you know, very simple, one page or half a page, a graphic that just points out if you have mature trees, your home is worth more. Mm -hmm. You're going to save on your heating and your cooling. You don't necessarily need to pay a fortune for spraying and fertilizing. Right. And, and then, you know, that could almost be the next step for the tree committee to, you would be in, informing everyone in a, in a helpful, positive way. You wouldn't be pointing fingers at, at people. Um, and you might win some people over with the financial aspect and also with the not having to pay for an expensive gardener or landscaper to come every week um, and do things that really aren't necessary. Um, 
so sorry, that's just while you were all talking and I was listening, that was one of the things that was going, kind of going through my head, it was almost like a PR campaign in favor of the trees. That's what we need, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are talking, this is another, uh, another subject, but it's related about uh, maybe having a, a garden walk and there are gardens that really uh, have a lot of native species and little or no grass. And maybe we could have a walk like that somehow highlighting some alternate kind of planting and, mm -hmm. you know, landscaping. It might be interesting. Another way of promoting it and educating. Mm -hmm. Those are great suggestions, Mary. Yeah, thank oh, you. Thank Thank you. I um, obviously this is very near and dear to me, um, and you know it really took the actions of, you know my my new neighbor, to make me more aware and and certainly very thankful for the village and and the work, the work that's been done and and even things like the tree walk um, on Sunday, which was absolutely wonderful. Um, but I, I do think that if people are violating and they aren't knowledgeable about the tree law and they're just deciding to, you know, go ahead with it and kind of, you know, not, not really caring what, what the village, the rules and regulations that we all follow um, are that there has to be some sort of, um, you know, payment or um, consequence or something. Yeah. The um, well, the law, you know, once it's really working, I hope it's working this way. Is that you know, if people take trees down without permits, protected trees, um, then there's not only a fine, but there's also a replanting requirement. Um, but I like the idea of a PR campaign. I mean, I would like to, I'd like to do this in a way that makes people feel good if that's possible. It will, I mean, it is possible. I'm not a marketer, but I think that that's, that's a good way to do it, you know, and um, I don't know, fact of the, tree fact of the week. I don't know what it would be, but. Robert's real good with ideas for this, for marketing. This. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Can, okay, I, let's, can, um, can I just get clarification on something for the note? Yes, the meeting that you went to, Gail, were the, the people who are going to be the new residents of 1010 Oriental, were they there? Yeah, they were there. The architect was there. Um, yes. Okay. Mm, well, as it was a, a planning board meeting. Okay. So it wasn't people. Um, were there people from the village as well, or just them? Like, I'm um, not sure what you mean, people from well, the village. Just, the planning meeting, board or... just, just the way at our meeting, anyone who from the village or anywhere, I guess, who wishes to attend. Okay. And click on the link. I, um, I would just say planning board. Um, let's see what I wrote here. Uh, here. Okay. Planning board hearing. Yeah. Summary it's open to the public. It's open to the yeah. public. I was just there because, you know, as a member of the okay. public. Right. So these names here, these are just uh, residents of the area? Uh, those are members of the planning board, except oh, for she's okay. right. an advisor. To the, she's a tree consultant, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The landscape consultant. Okay. Landscape consultant. Okay. Um, are we going back up to the items to uh... I'm going back up to the agenda. Okay. The next one is the question I actually, oh, we were talking about at the beginning. Um, it's an open item and I mentioned to Mary coming in because she did a lot of the reporting on 1523 Henry. And I had the question of what, whether you know how what enforcement actions have been taken and i don't have an answer to that but i'd like i'm going to continue to follow up asking i know there was a violation issued about the sidewalk and i don't i know that 
the building inspector went over and several of those trees were protected trees. Mary has her hand up. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Um, in addition to the new owners of 1523, um, you know, cutting down all of the trees and, and the vegetation on their own property, they also, um, there is a lot that runs, um, it's, the address is West Street. Mm -hmm. um, it is owned by, there's a house on West Street that actually owns the lot. It runs mm -hmm. from West towards, um, towards Hunter and it's owned by the house next door. The new owners of 1523 Henry clear cut part of their property. Wow. And, um, and with, they said that they had a survey done showing that that property was theirs. These um, sort of sound like very good neighbors. I, I have no comment, Beverly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Never mind, I shouldn't have made a comment either. Uh, is, so is that being worked out between the two of them? You know, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I know um, the, the woman that owns the property was, I mean, they were mature dogwoods. Dogwoods don't get very, you know, oh, wide. Oh. Um, there were a few um, fruit trees up there. I mean, it was just, it was really, it was a beautiful space. Uh -huh. um, Terrible. And, you know, and now it's, now it's just dirt. Um, and it's, dirt isn't, dirt isn't pretty, you know, like, no, <laughs> no. like okay. beautiful dogwoods and gorgeous lilacs. And, you know, I know that some of them might not be native, but Dog the <laughs> animal activity and, you know, the birds that were coming through, especially in the fall before, before they, they chopped everything down, you know, it was just, it was really fabulous. Um, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of hairball noise there. <laughs> but I just, I, I think that's why I feel so strong strongly about the, the enforcement part or, or even the, um, you know, the having, if you want to do something on your house here, you have to put the sign up, you've got to get the forms and, yeah, you know, to just decide on one weekend that you're going to take all your trees down with your buddies. And the building department was absolutely fabulous with, with responding to my concerns, but but the trees are gone. The, the trees are gone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, along with everything that they they supported. Um, and it, it, it wasn't even like I objected to some of the trees coming down because they weren't in great shape, but it just, in any case, um, it would be nice to see, you know, like the permit that says, um, you know, on this site, a proposal has been to remove this many trees and, you know, that is the equivalent of, you know, this many trees will be planted. I just, I think that the owners of 1523 Henry are going to hope that the village just forgets about them. Yeah. Um, great. We need to follow up on the replanting. Um, yes. Um, I, I have to go do um, the um, the the carpool pickup for oh. <laughs> for my daughter. So I'm going to jump off the call. I just again, I want to just say thank you to um, to the village, to the tree committee, to everyone here, and um, you know, and, and thank you for letting me kind of be in on your meeting and and comment as as you've let me. Um, it's just really incredibly good work that you're doing. And please, I am a librarian in my real-time job. Um, if you ever need a librarian's assistance with anything, just please feel free to, um, to email. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mary, thanks so much. Bye. You're welcome.
Bye-bye, bye, everybody. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, that was good. Um, Maybe she'll join the tree committee the next time there's an opening. And there's an opening. Great minds, they go like. We actually have an open seat. You do? I think we do. Um, I didn't realize it. I think I didn't realize that Wendy was rotating off, so. Oh, you're right, you're right, well. Anyway, uh, let, let's go through this now, but that's worth it. I know someone else who's also said she was interested in it, but I haven't actually been able to get together with her to talk about it. So it's nice to know there might be several people. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Let's talk about the new trees. Um, I think we learned last in the December meeting that the reduced, we had to reduce our fall list from 130 to 36 trees because the prices went up, but those 36 trees at the last minute were delayed um, now until planting in early spring because um, by the time the order, by the time we worked our way through all of the things that were going on in the village to get around to those 36 trees, it was early December and the vendor would not give us a guarantee, which we always try to get a one year guarantee that the trees will survive. Um, it's a good time actually to plant trees. I talked to Jerry about that. I suspect he had just let his crew go and didn't want to bring them back. But at any rate, we had approval from the trustees to buy these 36 trees even though they were at this higher price and we will be getting them. The budget doesn't close till June. We're gonna be getting them for spring planting, early spring planting, I hope. So Matt, I think you're getting two of them. Um, right. Um, another thing to be just talked about is perhaps with only 36 on the list, we could try out these mulch rings. They've used them in the park. And our idea isn't so much, I mean, mulch is always nice. It's really to keep the trimmers from cutting into the bark of the small trees. So it would be, I think, a good time to try introducing them with street trees. Because a lot of street trees get badly damaged and it's not infrequent for them eventually to be killed by the trimmer cutting the bark all the way around the base. I've also been thinking that some of the locations on the list for fall 2022, uh, they were on the last list that we haven't been able to plant. Um, I'd like to look into bare root trees. I don't, I don't, I'm not convinced that the prices are gonna come back down to where they were before. I don't think prices ever go back down that far. And I also, there's no way of predicting either when the current inflation or labor shortages are going to end and bare root trees are less expensive, but they're also, I think we all remember Jerry explaining that they actually establish better. They're much smaller. And I've had several, we planted them one year because we needed them on Brook Street. The space was so small. I've had, this, we planted about a dozen, I think. And I've had several of the people who had those trees planted in their houses come up to me very worried because their trees did not look as big or as healthy as other trees that have been planted, but actually bare root trees are supposed to do better after a year or two, establish better and they grow faster. So I think that's something we should consider. And that way if it's, the prices are lower, we can plant more trees. <laughs> yeah. Um, Plans for planting beyond the right of way. Um, Matt, that's what BROW stands for. And um, this is in the new tree law. Uh, up until now, we've never been able to plant on private property. We can't put village pro property, which is a tree, on private property. But New York State had passed a law a few years ago that we learned about from the um, people who drew up our management plan saying that municipalities, if they chose, could pass laws that would let them, with the permission of the property owner, plant trees on, those, on that property. 
Um, sorry to interrupt. Nora, did you get the email from Matt? He he got dropped. He reconnected, but he can't speak. So can you let him? Can you uh, enable him to speak? I got him. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Bev. Okay. Um, can he hear? <laughs> anyway, I'll keep going. He anyway, just mentioned not being able to speak. So. Okay. The user's back. Okay. Hi there, user. Should be able to hear um, us now. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. There you go. The, um, at a recent trustee meeting of the trustees, Nora, you, you'll know which one. Um, the mayor proposed an idea he calls tree scholarships. Um, we're particularly, there are other locations in the village where now we're, we're planning to plant beyond the right of way and we will need written permission from them. But one of our goals is to try and start planting in areas like Washingtonville or along Fenimore. Fenimore? Not, is Fenimore the one that goes, Halstead, goes from the train station into Harrison? Halstead. That's yeah, I, I always call it Fenimore. Anyway, the, it, locations like this where they've never been able to put trees and it's just hot. And so mm -hmm. now we Fenimore would, could use them too, actually, Bev. Which tree? Which tree? Fenimore also needs them for the same reason. Okay. Yeah. Um, as long as there's ground on the private property, you know, we have to have it somewhere. Yeah, but, I mean, it's just the tree. Where, there's no, there are no trees on Fenimore in that industrial zone. Yeah. 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 There's not a lot of land there, but we can look. We yeah. Can look. Anyway, we can now. We now are allowed to do that, and well, so. Tom Murphy was proposing what he was calling tree scholarship, which is someone who thinks like a marketer in which we, we would write to the owners of property. I've, I've, Gail and I, and then I did it again later, went through Washingtonville and identified addresses where we thought trees could go on the private property. So um, there is a draft, which is attachment five, which is a letter that we go from, you're too far down, I think. There are five, okay. Uh, letter that could be sent. I'm going to, this is, this is just a draft I'm going to offer to the trustees so they don't have to write one. And if they don't want to use it, they don't have to, but this, this got in all the points that I thought should be covered. And then Gail made it sound much more exciting in the first paragraph. So a letter, asking them for permission to put a tree on their property, which would become their responsibility, their property. And we would be willing to tell them, you know, how it should be watered and how it should be pruned over time. But it is, it's basically a gift of a tree, but it would have the effect of building canopy in these areas that need it. So, so can I just say, we're trying to make sure that's legal. It's a good, it's a great idea. It may not be legal. I so, mean, the BROW or the tree scholarship? Tree scholarships. Okay, how is it different planting beyond the right of way? Because we're, there is an opinion from the attorney general that it's not permitted. So we have asked for a specific opinion. So we're, we're reach we're trying to see whether that's something we can do. We approved a draft of a letter that the village attorney is sending to the New York State Attorney General to make sure this is something that's legitimate. But tree scholarships are basically BRO. Well, that's all I can say. Until we know that it's absolutely legitimate, we okay. have to we, we, we okay. make sure we can do it. So okay. We're, we're trying to make sure we can do it. Okay. When we find out we can do it. Yeah. Um, I They'll probably respond in the next. I hope they'll respond in the next month or so. The letter is the letter probably went out. We'll go out sometime this week. Okay. Should we? I mean, is it okay for us to send this suggestion of a letter if it's approved? Or should we wait till it's approved? Uh, I wouldn't send it to people because we don't know that we can actually. Send Not to it. people. Send it to the trustees. It would sure, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can go ahead and do that. Sure. Okay. Should we vote to send it to the trustees as a suggestion? I'm never sure what we have to vote on. Okay. Um, would someone like to propose and are, you, have, are there any changes to this? I guess I should start with there. Does anyone looking at it um, have any suggestions of things that should change? Oh, you could add something about the financial benefits. 
It's getting to be a long letter. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess we don't need it. I mean, you need a letter people will read. <laughs> yeah. I do think that though, in terms of the financial benefits and other benefits of trees, mm -hmm. that a little brochure might be beneficial. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Just tuck in a little brochure on the benefits of trees. Maybe it could be ready by like cleanup day. You know, so it could be given out a cleanup day, but it also could be something that can go on the newsletter and be something that's on the website. Okay. I'm sure something exists that we could probably, you know. Yeah, we might be able to find something. Yeah. 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 Is anyone got time to take this on and look for something that might exist or create something? I can look. I can look for something. I mean, I'm not. I'm not good with artistic stuff, but I can look around and see if there's something by the Arbor Day Foundation or something like that you could use. That would be great. Robert's Robert, 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 Robert. that, and if and then we can also we might find that some of the things we think are benefits. I mean, our, we outlined a lot of the benefits at the beginning of the tree law for that matter. So right. Arbor Day probably already knows what works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. they've got stuff. Yeah. But have that down, right? That what? I'm sorry. They have that down. The yeah, that, this is what they do. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do, right. We don't have to invent the wheel. <coughs> I'm just writing. Okay. So that's an idea. So maybe should should I send the letter on or should I wait until we find a brochure and then send that on to the trustees or? Well, I mean, you can send a letter now. I think actually, you know, we're starting our budget season. So I think we should, if we're, if we're going to try and print a brochure, we should probably make sure it's in the. Okay. Budget. Okay. Um, and, you know, maybe, and, and, you know, your budget, all of our budgets start June 1st as the yeah. fiscal year. So we yeah. adopt a budget in, you know, by the end of April. Um, so if we wanted to print a brochure earlier, we'd have to figure out, but, you know, we haven't spent any money on trees either. So we can reallocate part of the existing. Yeah. So um, I think that's something we should think about. I mean, I'll make a point of making sure it's known in the budget, okay. but I think that's, that's, that's really a good way to get people on board with trees. Okay. Like the carrot approach versus the- Yes, the carrot's a very good idea. Um, for that matter, maybe the Arbor Day Foundation gives away their brochures. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. Okay, thank you. So, um, oh, so should we vote to send the letter over to the Board of Trustees? Yes, uh, let's just vote so we know for sure we've done it. Motion? I make a motion. Okay, Marlene, you seconding? Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Um, on the agenda. Six, seven. Okay. Um, back on the agenda. Oh, I, I, it's another thing. Um, I, I would like to find out from Jerry whether there's progress on the tree inventory that he's doing with high school students. Um, I know he had three working on it. And I just don't know whether it's, we do need it. So I hope it's progressing. It's hard when you're working with volunteers who have lives. <laughs> Should I go back up? Um, to the agenda, I guess is um, okay. Tree, yes, there you are. No tree inventory. Um, the tree walk uh, last Sunday was just great. The day was beautiful. It was cold, but it was brisk. It wasn't bitter, and we had about forty people show up. It was wonderful. And so we had, because they had pre-registered, um, Gail talked to Jocelyn who was doing the tour and she brought a second guide. And so- divided. We should mention that there was actually an error. They're supposed, they're supposed to close out at what, 20, 25? I'm not sure, somewhere around 20. But um, there was a mistake in how the sign up was set up. And so we had, what was it, 50? 
seven or something at the end signed up 50 were registered and then seven or eight were on a wait list yeah um so that's why we hired a second naturalist because yeah. it's just too unwieldy covid and just talking to such a large group yeah it's hard to expand it to two so actually though because so many people signed up it might be worth not limiting yeah, I mean, the fact that people really wanted to do something interesting outside because of COVID. On a cold weekend, on a really cold weekend. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now that we know that it works to bring in a second arborist, maybe we don't need to limit registration. Um, we were lucky that a second arborist was available because it was kind of oh, last right. minute. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we can try. We, I, I don't know. Maybe we should keep know. doing it. We should ask Jocelyn is what we should do. Ask her if we could open it to like a 50 max, if we could have two naturalists from that point on. She was, she's like over the top with the response. Um, yeah. So it would, it would, I hate to turn anybody away. I do too. I do too. Anyway, she's eager to do a spring walk now and it, maybe even in Florence Park. So people who come the second time can see how the trees have changed from winter to when they're really leafed out. She's great. Really like her. Those are um, great programs. Mm -hmm. um, agenda. Oh, an another attachment six is a draft of um, recommended species for village trees. We talked about this last time and I changed the list somehow. I, I made some modifications. These are not entirely, but heavily native tree lists that work. You know, we've used and they work here. Uh, we've divided them into small trees, which can go under the Con Ed wires and then anything more than 30 feet tall at maturity, which is a medium to tall that can't go under the wires. Um, and last time we met, there was a suggestion first that I try to indicate whether it tolerates salt because there's road salt to be concerned about. And also a storm, it doesn't happen often, but at Hurricane Sandy, because the winds were so powerful, salt spray became a big factor and that killed some trees. Mm -hmm. Actually, even not, in, not in, just in, along the water, but it carried some distance, so. And, you know, quickly. also in certain years, um, there have been a lot of arbor vitae killed by salt, just like in my neighborhood, because of the salt. Road salt, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Road salt is a real problem. There's trees that are salt sensitive um that we plant along the street i try to put on streets that don't are not heavily trafficked and therefore they don't okay. get salted often and they also don't spray out a lot of the salt um because there's some really nice ones that, for example we've added the american dogwood to the tree it's beautiful to the list it's a beautiful native tree um but it i believe is sensitive to salt so and um so the places where I've put it, it's, this is the first year we've planted it, places where I've put it down are streets that don't need, I mean, don't, don't have, there's not a lot of problem with road salt. They probably get plowed ones. Um, there it is, flowering. Doesn't tolerate salt. A lot of, it's hard, the aerosol salt, there's not a lot of information. Some places, a lot of a lot of the sources I looked at just say not tolerant, not salt tolerant or salt tolerant. So, but it's usually referring to the soil salt, which is usually referring to road salt. Um, the other addition I made was um, what what's the top of that, Gail? Would you move it up so I can see the heading? Oh, whether we recommend it for this for streets or parks. Most of them are both. Um, London Plains, we're really thinking, are, are, they're 
just such they're beautiful trees. They're so tough. They really survive in all of the hardships that street trees suffer. Um, you know, the heat, the sometimes drought, they survive drought, they survive water, you know, flooding, they survive salt. They're great trees. Um, so they're, you know, in particular, we like to have them on the street. They, they've gone in the park sometimes. Um, a couple of them down um, the bottom, the white walnut and the American hornbeam are both really better for park. There's another one there. The linden, linden I know just is really wide. And I think that it's also not tolerant of salt. So it wouldn't go in Harbor Island Park, for example, but they would be great trees and they would also add to the diversity we're planting, but they should go in parks. Um, I did add, Marlene, you suggested adding two trees. One of them is the walnut, which I put on. The other one was, I think, hickory that you liked. But that one has a really, I, I didn't put it on because it has a really long tap root and apparently does not transplant well. You almost have to grow it from the hickory seed. <laughs> so I didn't put it on the list. Um, but walnuts would be nice. Yeah. Know, Great tree, beautiful tree. And, and pawpaws in parks. And what in parks? The pawpaw. That has a taproot problem too. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Yeah. So I don't, and, you know, I think it's probably hard to get from growers for that reason because they really don't transplant. I see. Anyway, but you can grow that one from a pawpaw. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I would like, you know, I don't have information on, on all of the aerosol salt, but I guess we should vote to put it, it should be a schedule that links from the website or from the law. I can't remember whether it's a schedule. I think that it links from the law, but it goes on the website. I know it goes on the website. So I think we need to vote to approve that if it's okay with you. It can be modified anytime. One reason it's a schedule instead of part of the law is so that we can just update the schedule without having to. I, I think it will be modified. If we're, you're constantly modifying the list, Bev, since, yeah. you know, I, as long as I've been on the tree committee, because things change, there are, yeah. you know, different uh, invasions of insects and diseases. So, yeah, we had to take yeah. ash off and things like that. And new cultivars. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a work in progress. Always. So shall we put this schedule up though? Motion. I say absolutely we should. We'll find out how to link it up, but it should at there should be a link on the website. Yeah, I think there already people is to access this. I think there's one with the old list. So I think that we just- yeah. Robert, Robert. I, I make a motion to uh, have it up on, to have a link on the website. Okay. Anyone to second? Did I, did I hand, oh, was that your hand blocking the camera? Are you voting, are you seconding Molly? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay, all in favor? In favor. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you, Matt. Okay, so um, I will send it to Robert and ask him to post it. Um, uh, there's a little bit more here. Tree removal. Oh, did you, uh, Matt, you were looking at you were going to look at, and this is an ongoing project and you know, there's no reason why you should have hey, um, a whole lot of stuff over this holiday, but the, well, I am interested in, in building a case about tree, Con Ed pruning long-term killing trees, so. Yeah, please. yeah, yeah. I got, I got a chance to do a little bit of research and I, okay. I was thinking like, like uh, this is a student with the teachers on this huh? one. I mean, <laughs> um, there's a lot of research out there on how pruning hurts trees, right? And specifically, you know, diseases, uh, 
the, the wounds actually, you know, sap the energy from the trees. When you remove the canopy, you, you remove the, um, the, the, well, you remove the capability of phot photosynthesis. So there's a lot out there. Um, I mean, I think, I guess for me, the question is, is how can I harness it for the yeah. community? Um, that's interesting. First of all, if you can just collect some of that information, I mean, just the links to it, you know, just, you know, and the fact that that happens, um, I mean, that that's a known thing. But then we also, I guess, want to look at real, I think there was one tree that had to be removed, for example, in our last meeting that we talked about, and it had just, it had been pruned so badly by Con Ed, and they're all over the village. They're all over everywhere. They just come in and they brutalize them. They take the branches off one entire side or they they cut the, the lead of the tree so that, you know, the stem so that it won't get taller and that really makes it susceptible to disease. So probably we should be mm -hmm. um, looking for those examples too. So well, there's a glaring example in front of the community resource center. Really? Oh yeah, there's a terrible example. In fact, Jerry hung a sign on it that said, you know, don't touch this tree ever again, Con Edison. Really? By order of the village of Mamaroneck. Yeah, he put a sign on it because they just completely brutalized this beautiful mature tree. Oh. It was horrible. Can we get a picture of that with the sign, the tree and the sign? I could take a picture if you want. Okay, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, building a file. Yeah. Because yep. I think if we eventually, my real goal is to try and you know, I really want them to start burying the lines. They keep saying they can't, but they're not going to pay attention to the tree committee of the village of Marinick. But if we can build this case, we can talk to nobody likes it in any any municipality I've talked to. You know, we can start to build a case with them. And then, you know, on a county level, there might be a little more clout. It's it's regulated. It's authorized by the state, but we need, um, you know, we just, it's a political question really. So we need to be able to do this. Also a financial question to go to it. They keep, they will, every time it comes up, Con Ed just says, oh, it's too, too expensive. We can't possibly do it. But I've asked on several occasions for them to like show what they've spent not just on pruning trees, but on power losses. You know, when the power goes down for two weeks, um, what does it cost them to bring crews in from Minnesota to put the power back up? And, they, you know, if you can look at that over the last 10 years, because we've had all these weather events, you can extrapolate in some way. It's not going to get better in the next 20 years. And anything like this they did would be a capital expense, I am sure. So it would be laying new new wire, new line. Yeah. Uh, Beverly, so are you you're talking to someone from Con Ed about that? I, I have talked to people on Con Ed a couple of times. Once they sent someone to a tree committee meeting, this was quite a few years ago, and that was the answer. You just, they wouldn't discuss it. And I've, I've gone to meetings, public meetings occasionally, and Con Ed's been there and raised the question and they won't discuss it. And I remember taking a class from the Cornell Extension and the Con Ed people came in and they wouldn't discuss it. So, you know, we have to be able, we, we need some sort of clout, which is not just going to be from the tree committee to get them to, to show what their costs have been and then we can compare them to what it would be to bury the lines. Then they say, I mean, they have all these explanations. They say, well, it's hard to repair a wire if it's underground, but of course all new neighborhoods have the lines. The last 20 or 30 years have had the lines put underground um, and they don't lose power. <laughs> so, and then I talked to someone who was pruning when they had a crew pruning out in front of my house recently. I talked to him. And he said, well, you know, that you wouldn't want them putting these old beat up lines underground because they would just, you know, break and you couldn't do anything. But they're not going to put the old beat up lines underground. They put down new cable. So we have to build this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, 
that's 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 great. I mean, I think no one would disagree that seeing these big uh, poles outside and mm -hmm. they fall during the winter, oh, yeah. like, no one likes that, right? I mean, yeah. we'd all have to see something different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And remember, in front of your house, you wanted to put not on the side where we're putting is it the London Plains, but on the uh, Frank. You yep. wanted to do the big tree, but you've got wires overhead. We can't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it was disappointing. Yep. Yeah, but that's the problem all over because the small tree, small trees are pretty, and they're much better than no trees, but they don't create that shade that really, you know, lowers the temperatures and makes people feel like they don't want to commit a crime or any of those things. Sure, uh, big trees look majestic. Yeah. You know, uh, they, they, it looks like a cathedral feeling when you're walking. Yes. Little yeah. trees are pretty, but yeah, I agree with you. Okay. So let's build that case. We're going to build that case. Okay. So, yeah, a photograph of that tree with a sign on it would be great. <laughs> um, new business. Well, we've been talking about this. The so village has given each of us a village email address and it's not easy to get it set up. Although actually I have a, an email from, I don't know, are all of you now using it? Maybe I don't need to send it. You got in on your village email. I um, have it, but unfortunately I didn't take a look at it. So I know I'm gonna it. forward the email I got from Craig who works for the village and told me what to do. So. Do you mean Cliff? Bev, do you mean Cliff? Cliff, Cliff? Yeah, it's one of those C names. Um, but it has to have your assigned email on it. Otherwise, you can't use it. Everybody I think the best out. thing is if you're having difficulty, reach out directly yeah, yeah. to Cliff. I think you're right, Marlene. Okay. So, it's Matt, did you Cliff get it? Cliff Hazes, C for Cliff, C-A-Z like zebra, E-S at uh, V-O-N-N-Y dot org. Dot is it org for you guys? It's interesting. We're net and you're org. No, we're com. We're com. Staff is org. No, we are dot net. Staff is com. com. What? I'm a com. I thought our email is dot net. I'll go back and look. Something is dot net. It might be treecom at dn v-o-m-n-y it's okay dot net, but something was dot net in there let me take a look anyway yes if you don't have your email beverly your dot your dot net the, the the tree committee email on the website that then gets distributed to all of you is org really well that's because yeah i mean the net is when they set up individual email addresses Okay. For volunteers. Oh, okay. so that is our individual is like our first initial last name at vomni.net. Yes. Right. That's what I was saying. Okay. Maybe that's why I couldn't get in. I was doing dot com. Okay. It's but, very confusing but, right, but for now, the beginning. Now the tree committee email, which is tree committee at vomny.org all feeds to your individual vomni.net emails. And that's much better because I didn't okay. even add a tree committee email and things were piling up in it apparently. Is a tree committee spelled out, Nora, Nora or is it treecom? Treecom at vomny.org. And then that, if someone sends an email to that address, it goes to all of your vomny.net emails. Great. Okay. That's how we should be. Well, all of us need to communicate that way from now on. What I am doing, if I'm getting an email that's part of a thread that was started before today, I am copying and pay, or actually, no, I, I'm forwarding it yeah, to my dot net, you know, my vomni.net email, pasting it in. And then you just, you know, you have to remember not to reply to that because it'll just go back to your email that you sent well, it from so you have yeah. to but that's what i do and then i x out like whoever you know was on the cc and whoever you know it was replying to and i put in who i actually wanted to go to when i 
uh, okay. create my reply when I write my reply. Okay, so, so we'll get, I have a we'll question. What? Um, when, when I send out the, the notes to be reviewed, do I no longer send it to the TC committee? Yes, you do, but you do it within the, the new village email. You send okay. it to treecom at vomny.org. It will go to your village email addresses. That's a distribution. That's a general list. It's a distribution list. It'll go to everybody. Right. We'll all get it that way, Ellen. Yep. I'll get it. To Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, I have one other addition to under new business, which is something that I actually asked Jerry for his thoughts about, and he likes the idea, which is that we make, as the committee, make a request to the Board of Trustees for a budget um, item of for pruning mature trees of $60,000 a year. He suggested the 60. Um, we, you know, they, 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 we have trees all over the village that need pruning, it's expensive. And if we could start an ongoing program, then we could, First of all, initially we could get trees that really need it, but you know, we, it would be nice to just sort of systematically work through the village every year and prune as much as we can within that budget. So um, do you all think that's something that's worth requesting? Do you know how many yeah. mature we have before we put a number out there for an annual amount? I mean, 60,000 a year sounds like a lot of money. Well, it wouldn't prune all of them. I know, I have no idea. That's why we're taking a tree inventory. Right. And the and the inventory is of street trees anyway. It doesn't include park trees, um, mm -hmm. at least not yet. But it, it's, it's a start, start of a program. Oh. And, and it isn't the idea that we would prune all of them in one year. Um, in fact, Probably we would just print the urgent ones in one the first year. Yeah, yeah. Till we can get into a program. Um, Bev, I think we should mention something about the uh, Yale Urban Forestry course. You could talk about it. I actually didn't haven't done that. I was busy today. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is the moment. If are are we done discussing budget? Yeah. We. I, I need to know whether that's okay with everybody. I make that request. I think what Marlene, Marlene suggested to check out what the budget is right now is very important before we is ask. There budget, is there a budget item for tree pruning? Yeah, I mean, like, it just seems like we're pulling that number out of the sky. Like, how did, how did he come up with 60,000 a year? That's a large amount of money. <laughs> um, that was what Jerry recommended. Yeah, I just don't know where that number came from. Okay. Well, you know, the, the budget process is just beginning. So we mm -hmm. adopt the budget in April. So you have time to figure this out. Okay. So the budget will start June 1st. So, you know, we want to, you know, by March, we want to have some good firm budget numbers. So I mean, I like maybe Jerry know. knows why he suggested that figure, yeah. but it would well, be nice a way to, to do it. A way to do it might be to find out because there is pruning done somewhat. What are we spending now on pruning? And then. Right. How many right. trees is that? And then we would want more because there's not a lot of pruning down. Right. I'd like to know what the budget also is for purchasing tree, purchasing and planting trees. Uh, yeah, it was a for watering trees because somebody goes around, or is that a, I don't know if that's a parks person now. It's become a parks person. It's not. But there's no separate line for that. Really well, that's separate. good. And and then what it what it has been for pruning? Yeah. Yeah, we might find out what it is for taking down, which is the most expensive. Mm -hmm. But if trees were pruned in good time, there would be fewer takedowns. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, as I go around, are, you know, will point to the, they don't want big, one of the reasons they say they don't want big trees is that there's a lot of dead wood in, in, in street trees because they're not pruned and they, it frightens them. So, okay. So I'll find out what we spend now and 
I guess all of those tree things. I think we've been told, we know what our planting budget has been in the past. Um, since Jerry's been here, we didn't used to know what that was under previous village managers, but he's very open with that. Okay. Um, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Yale uh, forestry, urban forestry course. Okay. Um, you could come in at any time. You don't have to go to all of the classes. I cannot recommend this highly enough for each of us. They are, it's about exactly what we are trying to do. It is 100% about it. Um, today, they, uh, the, the presenter, and they, they're incredibly knowledgeable, articulate people who are teaching this course. Um, it's somebody new each week. It's on Thursdays at 11.30, it's free. I will share, uh, I'll, I'll put a, a link for information. Um, I'll send it out to the Tree Committee website. Do they record it? Because some, you know, not everyone- They do record it. I don't know how you can get it, but um, I took notes today. They talked about various municipal, various, they, I'm sorry, let me start all over. Today they talked about initiatives, tree planting initiatives, and also um, counting canopy, counting trees in various municipalities. Um, planting trees like New York's Million Trees Project, Philadelphia's Plant One Million, which I think might be one billion now or something amazing like that. Washington's Urban Tree Canopy Plan, et cetera. Um, they talked about typology of urban forestry measurement technologies, which blew me away. There is now this um, technology that, uh, let's see, it, I, I want to try to get this right. It, it uses some, some kind of sonar technology to, it helps, it also helps guide cars, different vehicles. Um, and I don't remember the name of it. And I even asked a question about it. So I'm really sorry, but I'll, I'll email them and ask again. Um, they're just, what it, what it does is you get a picture of all the trees and kind of it, it, gets, it gives you a sense of how tall they are. It separates it from um, just vegetation. And that's sometimes very hard to do with just a, like a, um, a satellite shot, for example. Baltic, oh, you know what? You could actually go online, look at treebaltimore.org slash maps, and you could see what their street trees look like. They had a contractor do that. They, a uh, tree, there was a tree count. Where was the tree count? Ah, uh, tree count. Street tree. I, know, I think if you send us the link, that would be great. Yeah, okay, sound. anyway, it's great. It's absolutely great. Um, they talk about targeted plantings, prioritization, awareness, long-term monitoring, environmental okay. justice. You sold it, you sold it, you sold it. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, we all need to be taking this class. It's really, really okay. important. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I will, <laughs> I will. Um, any other business anybody has? I thought it was other business. Um, calendar, Nora, when are we, are we still doing online meetings, I hope? Yeah, so the next is the fourth Thursday of February. February, which would be. Um, uh, pulling up the village calendar. Fourth Thursday. Um, 24. 24th, yeah. Okay. All right. So that's four weeks from today. So we have February, upcoming meetings for February 24th and- That's the March. school break. Um, I'm gonna be on vacation then, so I won't be able to make it. Oh. oh. And March 24th is the following one. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be rough. Um, well, we, might, gonna... we might be getting our floors redone, so. <laughs> but I'm not gonna, don't plan around that. Um, could we uh, move it up to the 17th? Is that possible, Nora? That would be better. Uh, we could. There's nothing scheduled on the 17th. Um, okay. 
Can everybody make it on the 17th? Ellen, Matt? I can. You can, Yep, Bev? yep I can. I can. Uh, February 17th? Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to send a note to Sally and Robert right yes. now? Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, I actually might be in Baltimore, but I can do it from there, right? Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do it from anywhere. I really, I really yeah. like online meetings. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. I could verify that tree map that you're going to send. That yeah, <laughs> you can. You can. Okay. Thank you, everybody. This was a good meeting. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Oh, go ahead, Marlene. <laughs> Marlene, Gail. It's 9 11. I second. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you and good night. All right, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good to see everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.